and Savior Jesus the Christ. We thank God for how he has kept us and keeping us, amen, through all that we're going through in the world. Uh, he's still on the throne, so we thank God for the Godhead this morning. Uh, we thank God for our, our spiritual leader in the earth, Archbishop Harris e. Clark and elect Lady Betty Clark. We thank God for them and their ministries, amen, their faithfulness. Thank God for my wife, my companion, man, we were over here uh, last night getting some things done, and I just thank God she's concerned about the church and members, and that's what a pastor's supposed to be concerned about, amen. And then to the deacon, Deacon McCarroll, in her absence and her mending, amen. Deacon Ballinger, in your voice mending, to everyone in your respective places. Elder Burke, forget about her, amen. Uh, I've been in concentrated prayer for you, Elder Burke, uh, because I'm believing that as they came out of, out of Egypt with no feeble, there'll be no feeble among us. I'm believing that, amen. amen. And, and so God, I think God's going to honor that. I believe God's going to honor that, amen. Sister Catherine, God's going to honor that, amen. Sister Roxanne, he's going to honor that. That weakness in your body, amen. It's just so God can get more glory out of your life, amen. So we thank God this morning for each and every one of you. The children, we thank God for you, amen. Uh, now, we're not going to be before you powerfully long, amen. To those of you watching by Facebook, welcome. We thank God for you in this new year. Our people are making their New Year predictions and their prophecies and, and all of that. And, uh, you know, I like making declarations as well as to what God will do. But you really don't know what God's going to do until God does it unless he tells somebody. Amen. If he don't tell you, uh, then, you know, we, we just sometimes we just shooting breeze and just throwing stuff up against the wall to see what a stick, amen? If somebody says, oh, that ain't right, I can declare and decree a thing. Yes, you can, but if God don't ordain it, then you can declare and decree all you want to, amen? So I'm listening for God. I'm listening for God. I want God to tell me what's going to happen, what's going to, what it's going to be. I'm waiting on him, amen? Just like he told me one time when I was praying this past year, he said, stay the course. In other words, don't move. Keep doing what you're doing. Amen. And then he came back and said, uh, when, I, when we got away from the prayer points that, that day, and I said, we're just going to pray our spirit, whatever comes up out of our spirit. And uh, I, I asked for a lot of things in that prayer. And before I could finish, God said, I've already given you what you've asked for. Amen. So if God don't ordain it, you can talk and pray and, and preach and prophesy all you want to. If God hadn't said it, it won't happen. Uh, but I believe that there's something uh, amiss in this year uh, because I do believe in numerology. And uh, this is 2022 and 22 is a double 11 and 11 is disorder and chaos. Amen. And uh, so 22 is a concentration of disorganization, if you will, according to numerology. Now, uh, it's already happening, I do believe it, because uh, we as a church began to get attacked again. Amen. Members are being attacked again by the enemy. Uh, and so the enemy knows that he can ratchet up the heat on this year. Amen. But I'm not worried about him. Amen. Praise God. Because I read in the word what I'm going to read to you today. Genesis 45. And we're going to read a long passage. So you'll know what's taking place here. Genesis 45. Verses 4. We'll start there. Through 18. Amen. 45 through 4 through 18. And we'll look at some other scripture to support my premise today. Amen. Genesis 45, verse 4. When you have it, if you signify by standing. Amen. 
And I'm going to declare and decree this over, over this church and over those of you who are watching by Facebook. You get in on this as well. Uh, amen. Are you ready? Uh, the King James says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years, hmm, my God, my God, in the which there shall not neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. And I shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and I shall be near unto me. Thou and thy children and thy children's children, and thy flocks and thy herd, herds, and all that thou hast. And there I will nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all thou, that thou hast come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that ye have seen, and ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them, and after that his brethren talked with him. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house. I want you to get this part. Saying, Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, Joseph, say unto thy brethren, This do ye, lay your beasts, and go. Get you into the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Man, I want to talk this morning about the blessings of Goshen. Amen. The blessings of Goshen. Are the children going to be dismissed? Okay, children, you are dismissed. While they are leaving, know that God got a blessing for you. In a time of famine. In a time of death and destruction. God has a blessing. Somebody say, with my name on it. Amen. It's yours. Amen. As Christians, as, as sons of God, God blesses his children. So this story, you know this story. It's very familiar. You how that uh, Joseph, when he saw his brothers at first, did not reveal himself to them. But, but, but put them under a little pressure. And they, they felt like, you know, hey, uh, if we bring our, 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 our baby brother back and you know, that guy, my, our daddy just, he just died. <laughs> you know, he'll just die because he's already lost Joseph. So he, he was tricking them, but he wanted to see if his brother was alive and if his father was alive. Uh, and you know the story how that when they came back and he began to tell them who he was and he wept loud and the people, he sent the people out and they heard him weeping. And they overheard the conversation that these men standing before Joseph were his brethren. Mm. Now understand what Joseph did. Joseph said, go get daddy. Go get your children, your wives. Bring them all down here because I'm going to keep y'all safe. 
Amen. Uh, you, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And, and then look, look what he says. I'm going to give you Goshen. Goshen. Goshen was a place that was very fertile, about 40 miles wide at one point, some points. Amen. So he said, I'm giving you the best land. Now, what I want you to see from this is this, that Joseph did not check with Pharaoh when he made that statement. And for years I missed that. He didn't check with Pharaoh that is it all right if I give my family Goshen, if I give them the best land? No. But see, God, when God is in the midst of something, <laughs> you can declare a thing and it'll come to pass. Uh, so then uh, when Pharaoh hear about Joseph's brethren coming to him, he was pleased. His servants were pleased. Why? Because Joseph had uncommon favor with Pharaoh. And there was nothing uh, Joseph could do that Pharaoh wouldn't be pleased with. Because he was a man of integrity. He was a man of great character. He carried himself well. Amen. So, so Pharaoh put all his trust in Joseph. And Joseph was doing a great job for Pharaoh. So Joseph could say, I'm going to give you Goshen. Pharaoh said, give them the best land. And he hadn't checked with Joseph. Joseph hadn't checked with Pharaoh. But God was in the midst of this thing. Hallelujah. Look at He said, the land, they shall eat the fat of the land. These your people? They my people. Amen. I'm going to take care of them. Uh, Joseph said, I'm going to take care of you. But Pharaoh said, I'm going to take care of you. See, listen, listen. God is saying in this hour that we're in, in this famine, in this pandemic that we're in, I'm going to take care of you. Put your trust in me. That's it. Put your trust in me. Uh, uh, I, I'm not worried about 2022 being chaotic or more chaotic than 2021. I believe that God has me in Goshen. Hallelujah. I believe that God has me protected. I believe that I'm going to eat the good of the land in this year. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is a blesser like that. God knows how to bless, when to bless. Amen. And he knows who to bless. Those who were faithful to him, those who have, have, have held on, those who believed him, and it didn't look like anything. It didn't look like anything down in Canaan. Go get us some food. Go get us some, 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 some flour, some meal. Uh, I heard there's plenty down in Egypt. But God was setting them up to get them into Egypt. Why? Because God's word can't fail. Don't you remember when he told Abraham, I'm going to make a nation out of you? And he told them what was going to happen to them. They're going to go down into Egypt for a while. Then they're going to be in slavery. Well, God had to get that plan in motion. And he sent Joseph ahead to make certain that the plan worked. My God, my God. So, so don't just read things and don't understand what's going on. God is in the midst of this. And when God is in the midst of it, it's going to work out. You don't know how it's going to work out, but it's going to work out. Hallelujah. They were going down trying to buy some stuff, and God wanted to give them some stuff. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm, my God, my God. You ever wonder why when you go to buy something big, you don't pay full price for it? God is in the midst of it. <laughs> and he, he's supporting you and your life in whatever you're going through. Hallelujah. He's got your back. Man, God's got your back. So, so we find this, this narrative here. And, and Pharaoh tells Joseph, listen, you tell them to go get their beast, go get that laden, the, their beast down, and I'm going to give you some wagons so you can bring your, your women and your children, and I'm going to load you all up. You go down with a few little beasts of burden, 
you come back with a whole lot of beasts of burden so that you can move your family. Roadway ain't got nothing on God. <laughs> Glory to God. He'll move you, man. Oh, there'll be no hurt, harm, nor danger when he moves you. Just follow God. Just follow God. Amen. He said, listen, you, you, you tell them to come on down here because they're going to eat the fat of the land here. Amen. As good as you've been to me, Joseph, as much as you've gotten me gained, Joseph, I owe you. And if I owe you, I owe your family. Amen. You bring them down here and we're going to take care of them. And they took care of those 70 some people and they multiplied and they grew and multiplied and they grew and they multiplied and they grew and they were prosperous. A little ragtag people that's trying to be a nation became a nation. And then Pharaoh died. Amen. And then Joseph died. And there rose a Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. <laughs> Didn't know what he did for Egypt. And he decided that these people are too mighty for us. We're going to have to treat them bad. We're going to have to put them in slavery. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to put them in slavery so that we can survive. Yeah, so that land that was so fertile down there that they were living off of, they sort of stripped them of that and, and, and now they're just working for us. They're building our pyramids. They, you know, they're working hard for us. We're trying to kill them out, but they just don't seem to want to die out. The more we afflict them, the hardier they got. God is good like that. I'm talking about the blessings of Goshen. I'm still there. Amen. Amen. So we, we find the story as it goes forward. God heard the cry of the Israelites, and he sends them a deliverer. And the deliverer is reluctant. Moses comes on the scene and he goes to Pharaoh and say, God said, let my people go. Who is your God? I don't serve your God. I'm not going to let your people go. Amen. And God told Moses I'm, that he's not going to let them go, but I'm going to get glory out of it. And he began to afflict Egypt. Plagues. Amen. You know the story. Now, the good thing about it is that Goshen, being in the midst of Egypt, was sealed off by God. Goshen did not experience the plagues that God sent to Egypt. Amen. They were divinely protected. This is where I'm going. If you trust in the Lord, you will be divinely protected in this hour that we're about to face. Amen. I'm, I don't care if it's worse than 2021. I believe that my God is well able to protect me and to keep me safe, amen, from hurt, harm, and danger. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. The Bible is full of scripture that tells us that God wants to, us to be, be, be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Amen. Watch this. Psalms 37 and 4. Uh, the Bible says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, verse 5, and he shall bring it to pass. So whatever I need from the Lord, if it's my desire, if I have delighted myself in him, I may go through some stuff, but I'm coming out, baby. Amen, somebody. Yeah, he, the, Satan may afflict me, but I'm coming out. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. So I got some blessings like Goshen got blessings. Hallelujah. I'm still standing. I'm still here. I'm still preaching. Amen. When they said I wouldn't be here, I'm still here because I believe I have the blessings of Goshen on my life. Amen. And I have delighted myself in the Lord. And Lord take, the Lord takes great pleasure in blessing his children. You're a child of God. God wants to bless you. 
Amen. Even if you're not a child of God, he'll bless you. Huh? He let the sun shine and the rain fall on the just as well as the unjust. Come on, somebody. So you're getting some blessings even if you're unjust. You're getting some blessings. But if you delight yourself in him, then he gives you the desires of your heart. Some things you don't have to ask God for. Come on, watch this. It's just a secret desire you got. God looks in the heart and sees your desire and you have delighted yourself in him. Then here it comes. And you, wow, where that come from? God know what you desired. <laughs> you have committed your way unto the Lord and he'll bring it to pass. Amen. <laughs> so so the, the Bible tells us that God wants to bless us just like he blessed the children of Israel down in Goshen. They were prosperous. They multiplied down in Goshen. Hallelujah. And the enemy got mad. I want you to know that when God start blessing you, the devil get mad. He'll have somebody to get mad at you. Uh, you haven't done anything to him. It's just that the devil got in him. And, and they decide that they're going to be your enemy and they're going to stop you from going to your destiny. But let me tell you what happened to people who get in your way when you're going to destiny. When you're going to destiny and folk are trying to stop the plan of God in your life, they get ran over. They may even be taken off the scene. Because they're not fighting you. Uh, they're fighting against God and God's plans for you. They'll get ran over. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad about that. Watch this scripture here. Isaiah 58, 13, and 14. Children of Israel had been in sin. I mean, they, they idol worshiping and all kind of things. They, they were defaming the, the holy day. And Isaiah writes this, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. In other words, they were not doing what God wanted them to do on his holy day. And call the Sabbath a delight. If you start calling the Sabbath a delight, if you love coming to church on Sunday, that's our Sabbath, amen. If you love the Lord, uh, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him not doing their own ways people are doing their own ways in this pandemic there are folk who have already stated about 38 percent they 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 say i don't know how they've come up with that figure about 38 percent of the people decided that they're not coming back to church i can watch it on tv i can watch it on the internet ah uh, but my Bible teaches me that we're not to fail to assemble ourselves as the man of some is. And even the more, in other words, you ought to be in church every chance you get. Even the more when you see the day approaching. Watch out. I know, I, I know, oh, I can serve the Lord at home. Yes, you can, but you need to assemble because when we assemble, we draw strength one from another. Amen. Uh, the, the television and, 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 and World Wide Web was not meant to replace Sunday morning service. Amen. Sunday morning worship. Yes, I can praise God in my house by myself, and I've done that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just me and Jesus got a thing going on. But baby, when I come into the saints, come among the saints, and I look at your face, and you look in my face, hallelujah. And if I see that you've been going through, I can encourage you, or you can encourage me along this journey. Hallelujah. You can't make it isolated. There's a, a message I preached years ago, shepherd and the sheep, and one of the sheep was a hermit sheep. Stay away from the flock. Mm, that's what the devil wants, to get you away from the flock. If I get them away from the flock, uh, I have a better chance of picking them off, just like the lion do, the weak ones in the herds. Amen. Ah, so you, you stop doing your own ways. Back to 13, the latter part. Nor finding thine own pleasure, 
nor speaking thine own words, O oh Lord. I said that I have said, but I have not said. <laughs> then Isaiah writes, God say, shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. Uh-huh. What that means, ride on the high places. He'll put you in high places. Yeah, you, you, you'll be well established there. Watch this. And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I'm going to feed you with the heritage of Jacob. What, Jacob? You mean Jacob? You mean Jacob who left Canaan and went down into Goshen? Yeah, that Jacob. Uh huh. That's his heritage. You, you're supposed to prosper. You're supposed to do good. You're supposed to be in high places. Hey, don't stop settling for being in low places. Amen, somebody. Somebody wrote a song. Uh, he said, I got friends in high places and one day I'm going to see them. Another man came back and wrote a song and said, Well, I got friends in low places. Places. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want my high places. God wants you in your high places. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the blessings of Goshen. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they said they were so blessed there. Even Pharaoh said, listen, and that's as you read that, the whole thing. He said, listen, do you have anybody among your brethren who, who is active and they know how to handle herds? He said, let them handle mine. Because when I put you over the nation, whoo, you bless me, boy. And I know if some of your people know how to handle a herd, I want them to handle my herd. Multiply my herds. <laughs> Multiplication takes place when God is in the midst. That's why Joseph was so blessed. God was in the midst. He was blessed in Potiphar's house. Mm-hmm. He was so blessed the wife wanted him. Mm -hmm. But because he was a man of integrity, a man of character, he ran out of his coat and, and listen, ran, ran into jail, ran into prison, forgotten about in prison. People got out that he said was going to get out, did not help him out. Amen. But God had it to be so that when the time was right, I disturbed Pharaoh. And nobody going to be able to interpret this dream but my man. Amen. Many people have tried to interpret what God was doing in 2021, what he was going to do, how he was going to do this, how he was going to do that uh, against these people and against those people because God was mad at them and blah, 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 blah. And they said, as I am a prophet and I heard from God, it's going to happen. And, and it didn't happen. That's why I say I'm, I'm a little leery about saying what God said. Amen. I, I got to know God said that. I'm not prophesying out of me. Come on. I want to prophesy out of the spirit, not out of the flesh. Because when it don't happen, then you got an egg on your face. Everybody looking at you strange. I thought you said. God said. But God had not spoken. Amen. Hmm. <laughs> so God's going to take care of you in this hour that we're in. But you got to believe it. You got a part to play in this. Your faith must be out there. Man, faith in what? The word that's already spoken. You're not looking for a new word. I'm going to just rely on the word that's already spoken. If I delight myself in him, he'll give me the desires of my heart. Amen. If I turn from my wicked ways, praise God, he'll heal this land. Philippians 4, 19. See, that's a, we quote this all the time. Paul was talking about his needs being met because the offerings that were sent to him, and I appreciate all of that. But in verse 19, he says, but my God, shall supply all your need. You supply my need, my God going to supply your need. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you want to be blessed, bless somebody else. 
I know, I know. We selfish. We, we just want to bless us. But these people had blessed Paul so that the word could go, get out and go forth. And Paul says, because you did that for me, God going to supply all your need. We don't want to put that, uh, 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 the, the latter part with that, the former part rather with that. We, we, we would just want to go to 419. But Paul said that because they helped him out. They sent offerings to him and, and his ministry to see that the word could get out. Now, what I'm saying, as you are blessed, bless somebody else and God will give you the desires of your heart. You're not blessing somebody else just so you can get. It's just a, a hey, listen, it's a principle. It's a law. The law of reciprocity given it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shake it together, run it over. Shall men give into your bosom? God will supply through men. Amen. Just like he supplied for, for, for Israel, Jacob, uh, hallelujah, and his family through men. Through his son Joseph and through Pharaoh. God wants to bless you. Hear me, those of you watching by Facebook. God wants to bless you right where you are. You don't have to go to Goshen to be blessed. He wants to bless your house right where you are. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You remember when uh, Isaac was going to go down into Egypt because there was a famine in the land? And God said, don't go down there. Stay where you are. I'm going to bless you right where you are. And bless that boy with a hundredfold return in a land of famine. God can bless you anywhere. You can be in the ghetto. He can bring you out the ghetto. Come on, somebody. Am I right about it? You can be almost up the hill. He take you to the top of the hill. Where folk were looking down on you, you looking at them in the eye. And they wonder how you got there. Amen, somebody. God will supply all your need according to his riches and not the world's riches. But we got to learn that God requires some things of us. God requires some things for us. Down in Goshen, they had to obey the Sabbath. Down in Goshen, they, they had to practice their religion. Amen. Which was different from the religion of the Egyptians. Down in Goshen, they, they, they kept the Sabbath. Down in Goshen, they kept all of that. And when God instituted the Passover, they kept that. Amen. That's what got them out of there. Got them out of slavery. It was a, it was a, a type and shadow of what Christ was going to do for us to get us out of Egypt. Amen. Watch this. John 16, 24. I'm talking about your blessings. I'm talking about blessings coming in your life. Amen. I already stated and got it established that you got to delight yourself in him. Amen. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. And he's able to supply all your need according to his riches and glory. John 16, 24, Jesus says this. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. God wants you to ask him in the name of Jesus, amen, that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. They couldn't help you in the hospital, uh, Sister Roxanne, because it was overcrowded. You asked, God supplied what you needed. And you're here today and not in the hospital because you believe God. Amen, somebody. Sister Catherine, you at the hospital because we ask in the name of Jesus, and here you are. Hallelujah. God is able. Now, there are others in the hospital well, that we need to be mindful of, and all those who are suffering in this hour, it's going to get worse before it get better. 
Amen. I know everybody comes about, oh, this is the year of divine this and divine that and divine strategic and all this stuff. Listen, just, just stick to the book. Amen. Let, let the book unfold in your life. Take hold to the book. Claim the blessings in the book. Hallelujah. And be joyful because you ask in the name of Jesus, you're full of joy. Yeah, I had some struggles, but I'm still full of joy. You can't take my joy, devil, because the blessings of Goshen are on me. I'm prospering in 2022 because the blessings of Goshen are on my life. Why is it that we open? Other churches still haven't opened the blessings of Goshen on our life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Jesus says in Matthew 6, 7 and 8, he's telling them, they ask him about how to pray. He says in verse 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. If all you can say is, Lord, have mercy, <laughs> God understands. And he will have mercy. So Jesus says, be not ye therefore like unto them. Watch this. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. God knows what you have need of before you ask him. He says, ask that your joy may be full. In other words, I know you have need of this, but you're too stubborn to ask. And it's, it's, it's there for you, but you won't ask for it. You won't come to me. All you have to do is come to me, delight yourself in me, and I know what you have need of. I give you the desires of your heart. Hmm. Hallelujah. So when you see people being blessed and they're getting the desires of their heart and you wonder how they're getting it, it's in the book. Everything in the book belongs to you. Hallelujah. The blessings that were on Goshen belong to you. Divine protection in a time of famine. Hallelujah. It's, on, it's for you. It's for the church. It's for those who love the Lord. Hallelujah. Even the sinners get in on some of this. But baby, you are a child of the Most High King. And as a child of the Most High King, he knows how to give good things to his children. Am I right about it? Yeah, so why are we, why are we asking for peanuts when God owns everything? Why are we uh, not asking him for things that will help in the kingdom? Why are we not asking for God to do mighty things among us that we may get your name out in the earth, that folk will know that there is a God who's able to keep you in the midst of this famine, in the midst of the pandemic, and you can just walk with your head held high, hallelujah, knowing that God got your back and every plague that come near you, hallelujah, won't even touch your body. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I, I believe that. I believe God is able to keep me. When we prayed for an answer for COVID, God sent the answer and people won't take the answer. Uh, we're praying that God, thank you, uh, Pastor Cannon. We're praying for God that folk be saved and God has sent the answer and folk won't take the answer. Uh, and that is the blood of Jesus applied in their life. I want you to know, hallelujah, that's been that way for ages. This is nothing new that we're facing. Second Thessalonians teaches us. Hallelujah. This this wasn't meant to be a part of this. But it was meant it just came up, so I'm gonna go ahead and spew it out. <laughs> Amen. Let's just let's just turn there. Second Thessalonians five. I think that's what that is. Oh, 
Hold on, hell, hell, we'll get there. Sometime I'm looking too fast. Here we go. Hallelujah. A three rather, not, no, not five. That's a two, I think. Here it is, First Corinthians 2. Are you there? Let's go down to verse 11. And if you're watching by Facebook, read this. I'm going to read this here. This is the New American Standard. Thessalonians. Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. 2, 11. Are you there? All right, I want you to read this. It says, and for this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they might believe what is false. Uh, read that out to King James, somebody, and I'll repeat it. Yes. They're going to believe a lie. Why would God send somebody strong delusions that they would believe a lie? I tell you why. Because they won't believe the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it says in verse 10, And with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. So folk rather believe a lie than the truth. Amen. And because they rather believe a lie than the truth, God sends strong delusions that they can't believe the truth. We're living in this hour right now where people won't believe the truth, the truth of God's word. Amen. Everybody rather believe a lie. They, in America, they got the big lie going. And I, I know this is political. That's all right, too. It needs to be said. Hallelujah. There's a big lie going, and people still believe the lie instead of the truth, although the truth has been proven over and over and over and over again. They had many uh, uh, recounts that proved the truth, but we're going to believe the lie. Why? Because now God has sent strong delusion, and they can't believe the truth. And because they can't believe the truth, they're going to perish. Listen, listen, woo, woo. the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I want the truth. What is truth? God's word is truth. I stand on the truth of God's word. And God, uh, listen, and if 22 is, is the number of, of just, uh, just chaos, then we're going to have a chaotic year. Mm, but the truth of it is, uh, I'm standing under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And under the blood, I, I'm protected. Hallelujah. Under the blood, God takes care of me. Under his wings. Hallelujah. Under his shadow, I am protected. God's going to protect you in this year. All you have to do is believe and just know that god got your back. Hallelujah. And everything that pertains to you, you put under the, uh, the wings of God. You put under the blood. You plead the blood over your rebellious children. You put plead the blood of Jesus over your rebellious husbands and wives. Hallelujah. Over rebellious church members, I put them under the blood. Lord, that they be protected and that they have enough sense to come to believe the truth and walk in the truth of God. Hallelujah. God wants to bless you. Why? Because he's a blesser. That's why. If you, whatever you are, you like doing it. God's a blesser. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless us in this year, this chaotic year that's coming upon us. I'm not worried about it. 
I put all fear aside. Amen. I'm not walking in fear. I'm walking by faith. Hallelujah. I believe God for some big things in this coming year. I believe God for prosperity in this coming year. I believe God that all things going to work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I believe the blessings of Goshen are on me. Over my life, over my house, over my, my family, over the church family. I'm believing God that he's going to take care of us in the midst of a famine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Did he not say a thousand shall fall at your side? Ten thousand at your right hand. But it won't come now you. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And listen, listen, let me tell you something else about God. You can't die. There are words of prophecy over your life that God said this is what's going to happen for you. If you die before that happened, you make God a lie and God is not a man that he should lie. So everything he's spoken in my spirit must come to pass before I die. I'm not worried about 2022. God has spoken too much to me in my life that's going to take place. He's shown me in dreams and visions, hallelujah, that must take place so I'm not dying. You say, oh, you sound arrogant. No, I'm, I, I sound faithful. Amen. I, I'm full of faith in this thing. I know my God is not going to let his word fall to the ground. I know my, he said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall forever stand. Not one jot, not one tiller will fall from the law. That's the kind of God I serve. Yeah, yeah, the devil sends the opposite word. Yeah, try to get you to believe that. Oh, you're going to die. Oh, you're going to die. You got sick. Oh, you're going to die. You start saying, I'm going to die. You declared that. You did. But the word didn't declare that. The word said you shall live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessings of Goshen are on you. <laughs> Listen, they, they, came out of, they came out of Egypt. Nobody was feeble. That's the blessings of Goshen. When they ate the Passover, everybody got healed. <laughs> the lame straightened up. People maybe had some blindness in their eyes. Their eyes were seeing 2020. And they didn't come out, just come out. No, they spoiled Egypt when they came out. And they took Joseph's bones with them. Because he said, listen, God's going to visit you all. And he's going to deliver you from here. When you go out, take my bones. Don't leave my bones in Egypt. And they honored that. Whenever you see the movie, they got this sarcophagus and they toting it. That's Joseph's bones. That represents his bones. They took him out of Egypt and buried him in Canaan. Amen. Hallelujah. And see, God can do those sort of things because he's God. If he said it, Shall he not do it? If he spoke, he going to make it good. So this year of 2022, let it come what may. I'm not going to be moved. Not going to be moved. Because my God is still on the throne. People are planning how they're going to rob this and rob that. Rob this election and rob that election. Do all these things. They're trying to, to hoodwink to get the, get the power. Baby, the power belongs to God. God puts up, he pulls down. You ain't going to do no more than what the Lord allow you to do. You ain't going to stop folk from voting no matter how hard you try. As a matter of fact, there's a groundswell coming up. 
because people see they're trying to stop them from voting. And it's going to be an avalanche. Hallelujah. And it's going to sweep them out. You say, oh, you, you prophesied now. No, that's what they say is happening. More people are, are being getting registered than ever before because of what folk are trying to do illegally. And it's going to shoot. Sweep them out. God's tired of mess. And when the saints go to pray, God will answer. Nothing gets by God. I don't care how underhanded you think you're doing in the back corners, in the smoky rooms, you know, plotting how you're going to do this and how you're going to do that. Nothing gets by God. So, I'm believing the blessings of Goshen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This year, yeah. everything we've been believing God for, the desires of our heart, yeah. we have delighted ourselves in him, going to fall on us this year. Hallelujah. And we're going to be able to do whatever we have desired to do that we couldn't get done. It's going to be done. You better hear me. I, I, I'm walking in these blessings. And I want to carry you with me. But I can't believe for you. You got to believe for yourself. It's an individual thing. But it's a corporate thing. Amen. Get in the blessing plan of God. During this pandemic, God wants the church to reassemble. The God wants the church to take the lead in this thing. Yeah, science know what they're talking about. Praise God because God gave it to them. The devil don't want you to believe because he's the devil. He's the father of lies. But I tell you that God will not be outdone by the devil. Amen. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. That will make the devil a bigger God than God. And he's not a God. He's a God of this world, but he's not a God. He's a created being just like you and I. Amen. God created him. How he going out God? God. <laughs> Praise God. Stand to your feet. We through. Amen. We pray that uh, you learned something today. Man, we pray that you're living in expectation in this year 2022. Man, it, it's, it's going to be, mark my word, it's going to be horrendous, but God is still in the midst of it. And as long as God is in the midst of it, I'm not worried about what other, there may be another variant on the way. We don't know. Because folk are not getting vaccinated and those are the ones that are suffering the most. People that are vaccinated are, are also getting this disease, or this virus, but it's not affected them like that. Because they got that inner protection. God made it so like that. So we can, we can you know, relax. Relax. Don't be so uptight. Do what you have to do. Protect you and yours. But know that God's got you. Amen. So we thank God for that. And uh, if there's another variant that's coming because folk don't want to get vaccinated, I say, hey, it's under the blood too. Whatever comes is under the blood. And listen, more people are dying from other diseases than this. So, hey. Just make certain you under the blood. Because if you die, you go on to heaven. Praise God. But if you're not under the blood and you die, in hell you lift up your eyes. 
Amen. So I thank God for God sending us our vaccine, the blood of Jesus, that cleanses us from all sin, all unrighteousness, puts us in the family of God. Hallelujah. That now he says, uh, you're my child. What, what do you need? And you say, Lord, I need this. He say, I know you need it. I just wanted you to ask. Because I want you to be full of joy. Christians ought to be full of joy. Man, not hatred. Bitterness. Jealousy, envy, and all of that. No, joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So if you're here and you want to, to connect to the church, you want to connect to God through Christ Jesus, now is your time to come. Know that he's standing here with his arms wide open, said, come unto me. Just, just come unto me. I will in no wise cast you out. Isn't that something? Come as you are. You don't have to, well, when I get better, I'm going to come. No. If you're listening by way of Facebook, I'm talking to you too. If you're not saved, then I want you to know that right now is a day of salvation. You can come and give your life to Christ. Amen. God is concerned about souls. That's what he's concerned about. And he wants to save your soul. Because it's not his desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So well, here we are in this hour that has faced this earth and the world is trembling. The poor countries don't have enough vaccine. The rich country got too much vaccine. So the rich countries are sending to the poor countries the vaccine that they have that people in their countries are not using, not taking advantage of what God has sent them. Trying because they realize if we don't stop this thing from around the world, it'll come back. It'll make another trip around the world. So we got to have something other than that vaccine. And we got to have Jesus. Because if I die from COVID, but I got Jesus, I'm out of here. I'm going to get my reward. But I can't die until my life is fulfilled. Until every word God spoke would happen for me happens or God would be alive. So I shall declare the works of the Lord. Amen. If you're here and you need prayer, we're going to pray for those who have uh, uh, been mentioned. Malachi, Sister uh, Carol, uh, Sister Renrick, anybody else that you know of that's, that's suffering in their body? Who? Julius, yeah, thank you. They got COVID? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell y'all what's happening. When I prayed and I prayed for everybody, people that are, that are uh, in good standing with the church and those who have left the church, and I prayed that God would get their attention. However you want to do it, God, is all right with me. So you're telling me that these people <laughs> that I prayed for, that God is working on them. Because he said, I've already given you what you've asked for. And I believe they're coming in. They're going to realize they're not their own. They're going to realize they were bought with a price. Amen. They're coming back to their teaching. Amen. The truth be known, we all strayed. But we came back because somebody prayed. So who am I that I can't pray for them who strayed? Amen. God is getting their attention. So we thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Thank you, mighty God. 